All right, everyone, these are five basic reasons why you might not be losing body fat. Now, I'm not saying these are the only reasons, but these are the main pointers that I found throughout my career that if we dive into one of these and we can dissect our everyday lifestyle, you're gonna pull something out of here that might be you know, incredibly beneficial to your improvement in body fat. So, in no specific order, number one, we're gonna start with exercise, all right? Guys, we gotta move. And when I say exercise, I'm not necessarily saying that you gotta go into the gym and you gotta pound the weights for 90 minutes. I'm not saying that. I'm saying exercise is breaking a sweat. And if you're someone last year who, you know, has just sat on the couch and lives a very sedentary lifestyle, then let's take your lifestyle to light activity. If you're at light activity, let's take yourself to moderate activity. It's all about showing a level of improvement. So at the very least, let's try and break a sweat five to six days a week. And that could be for five to 10 minutes. Just by allowing yourself to get a bit consistent, all right, just by allowing yourself to move, to sweat and get yourself active, you're gonna put your mind in such a better spot that in time you're gonna to wanna to continue to improve those areas, all right? Now those of you out there that have been training and you feel like you're spinning your wheels, well then I think we have to reassess our plan. What is your plan? Are you just in there doing the elliptical all day long? That might be a bad decision right there, okay? That just might not fit you individually. It might work for someone who is, who is untrained and who's never trained in, the, in their life, but for someone who might be a little bit more advanced, um, doing the same things over and over and over is gonna allow your body and your mind to adapt, and you're never gonna show any improvement. So I think at the very least, you need to step out of your body and look at what you've been doing and assess and say, listen, if I've been doing the same thing from a training standpoint over and over and over and it's stale, I may, I may need to seek out some help and I may need to train up, uh, change up my approach so you know what, I can um, get a little bit of spark in my life when it comes down to my training. We don't want our training to be boring. We don't want our exercise to be boring. So I think it really depends on the level that you're at and assessing, do I need to make change, yes or no. Moving on to the second point, number two is nutrition. Okay, now, um, I don't like, sometimes I use the word diet. I don't, like, I don't like diet. Nutrition for me is more long-term. I take a food as medicine approach. I do not believe in short-term um, diets, quick fixes. I believe in a long-term approach. Now, if you look at any fitness person who is credible and who has um, sustained a level of health and wellness over a period of time, they are not doing three-day detoxes or these crazy, um, you know, quick fix approaches. They are in it for the long haul. And I think what you need to first do is look at food quality. Before you measure macros, before you worry about whether you're on a high protein, high carb, high fat diet, whatever that might be, because all these diets can work, I think it's really paying attention to food quality. And that's the one consistent point that you need to focus on all year long. Now, once you start nailing food quality, and I believe 80 to 90% of your day or your week, the food quality is really good and you still allow yourself a little moderation and a little room to have some fun, which um, I think we should be able to do in, in life. At that point, you can then start dialing things in. But if you've been um, struggling just to get food quality down pat, yet you're coming to me and asking me for questions on macros and measuring macros, I think we're putting the cart before the horse and I think we need to step back and really start focusing on um, getting a little bit of a better understanding on the foods that need to go into our body. Now, for those of you that are more advanced, yes, in time, we could start you know, measuring out portion sizes with our palm, our fist, our thumb, depending on whether we're, we're measuring protein, carbs, or fats. You'll see that in my nutrition guide. Um, it's a very easy way to start uh, being able to you know, judge the quantity and the, um, and the amount of volume that your meals are gonna have. Um, if we wanna jump it up and take it up even another notch, you know, some people, macros work really well. They work really well for me, but I'm not gonna tell you I measure macros all year long. Macros actually allow me to relax a little bit more. And turning around and measuring my macronutrients of protein, carbs, and fats, and understanding around a range I need to be in day in and day out, um, that for me, uh, you know, uh, cuts down my level of stress. For some people, measuring macros add stress. So I think as a coach, you have to recognize who you're, who you're dealing with. And as, you know, just, an everyday individual out there who's just trying to be active, start with what's less stressful, start paying attention to food quality, get three square, me square, meal, square meals a day in, and then at that point, we can always adjust, okay? Number three, hydration. Very simple, I want you to consume half your body weight in ounces of water. 
So for someone that's 200 pounds, 100 ounces of water. For someone who's 150 pounds, 75 ounces of water. That also means we can go a little bit above that. So if you're 20, 30 you know, grams above that, you're gonna be fine. You're not gonna wash the minerals out of, your, out, of your, out of your body. I've noticed that when I start consuming gallons and gallons of water a day, and I mean like above three gallons, um, I have seen in the past that my, that my skin and my nails might get a little bit brittle. I've done that around shoot times. Um, it might benefit me from a short, um, term approach, but for long term, try and stay a little bit above that half your body weight in ounces of water or coming in right at that number, I think is fine also. If you're a little bit below, you're gonna be also, uh, you're gonna be okay as well. Listen, when we're outside and we're sweating, whether it's hot or whether it's cold, we also need trace minerals. So making sure that um, you know, our body does have an, a certain amount of sodium in it, right? And I think adding things like pink salt or Celtic salt to our water or adding that to our food, salt has always been looked upon as like something bad. Oh my God, salt is how our heart pumps and our brain functions and our muscles contract and we need salt in our body. And I also know that if we're consuming um, and, and we're trying to hydrate and we're starting to feel like we're thirsty all the time, it could mean that our salt uh, consumption is really low. Um, I, there's a supplement I out, love out there. It's actually a hydration drink called Halo Hydration. Fantastic. I'll do that or I'll just add salt to my water or my, um, or my food to taste. And I've noticed that my energy's better, my skin's better, um, my quality of sleep's better. But once that sodium level gets too low, uh, no bueno. So make sure that our hydration is spot on where we're flushing out all the impurities in our body. That's going to help with our energy level. That's going to help with burning fat. That's going to help with, um, you know, our, um, our uh, muscle repair, our rest, our recovery. So much benefit comes from water. And um, it's one of the most, uh, I think, one of the most overlooked areas. We just, the majority of the public out there is just not paying enough attention to their hydration. Okay. Point number four. We're gonna get into sleep, um, call it stress, recovery. I like adding happiness in there also because if we're always stressed out and we're not necessarily um, getting good quality sleep, and what do I mean by that? Seven to nine hours a night, I use um, a tracker called Aura Ring. Okay, I'm wearing it right here. Aura Ring is a way that I can you know, turn around and I can gauge what's going on in my rest and recovery. This morning I woke up and you know, I was noticing that early on in the night, I, I was, I, I guess my sleep was disrupted for some reason. And I've noticed this over the last couple of days. Something's going on. Is it my dog's in bed? Is it maybe I'm eating too close to, uh, to bedtime? I reached out to Dr. Rebecca Robbins. I'm trying to do a little bit of a deeper dive on it. She's a sleep expert, all right? But having that data and having an understanding on what our quality of sleep is like is very important. Because if I'm in bed nine hours and I'm only getting seven hours of quality sleep, yes, it is, I'm, I'm in that norm of seven to nine hours, but there's some type of deficiency going on. There's something going on that I can improve. And I love being able to look at my sleep day in and day out and be able to determine, all right, maybe I ate too close to bed. You know what? I had two cocktails last night. That's why my resting heart rate went up. There's certain patterns that we're gonna be able to see that can determine whether we need to make changes in our behavior or not. And once sleep starts plummeting, then you know what? Levels of stress starts elevating, um, irritability, uh, energy levels start dropping. And you know, in my opinion, sleep is the best fat burner. I steal that line from, I stole that line from Paul Check years ago. Sleep is the best fat burner and it's free. So I've seen people improve their sleep quality and immediately lose um, high levels of fat. And um, it, it, it's, it's that one area that I think everyone needs to really be focusing on. Okay, jumping into number five now, remember this is in no specific order, but you gotta get out of your comfort zone. I think you have to assess what is it you've been doing. Okay, if you're gonna approach me in the gym and you're gonna start telling me what you've done in the gym and it's not really working, well, are you open-minded to take a different approach? Are you open-minded to look at your nutrition plan? Maybe your fats are way too low. Maybe your carbs are too low. Maybe your calories are too low, which is something that I've noticed um, a lot of my challengers have gone through. They have come to me and they've been consuming well below their total daily energy expenditure. That means the amount of calories that they're burning if they're just sitting down doing nothing on top of what they're burning from activity. And if they're consuming way less calories than they're burning, this is gonna be a very big problem. Okay, we're not gonna have enough gasoline in the tank and we're not gonna be able to optimize energy levels and body composition. So I've actually seen people 
I mean the bulk of my people, increase their calories and improve body composition. So you gotta get out of your comfort zone, all right? You can't always say to yourself, all right, well, I'm consuming 1,500 calories a day and I'm just, I'm not seeing any results and I'm gonna remove more calories. Well, removing calories may not be the answer. We may need to increase calories. This is something that's gonna be out of your comfort zone because you're always, a lot of us are from the school of thought that just remove calories, remove calories. We can't keep removing. Okay, even with our training, it's the same thing. You've been doing the same program. I know what works for me. Guys, I have been doing this professionally for almost 25 years. I've been a student to fitness and wellness, okay? My body is always changing and I am always learning something new. And I'm realizing that what might have worked for me back then, I'm finding a better way to do it now. The idea is to enjoy what we're doing. The idea is to have fun, to feel invigorated, and to wake up every day and want to live a healthier and active lifestyle. But if you've been doing the same thing over and over, I think you may need to speak to a coach or you may need to find someone that's gonna hold you accountable and you may need to take a different approach. Five basic points that I feel that if you focus on those five, um, you're gonna notice that you're, you're gonna get into a much better direction. If you need any help on how to approach this, you can um, you know, fire off a comment to me below and I will get back to you. Thanks guys.